let's start by initializing our Keystone project. I want to say that the documentation of Keystone.js does a great job at explaining everything, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Let's proceed further by initializing our project. We can do it in two ways. We can use npm or yarn. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use yarn, but I'm going to show you the alternative npm command. So this is the npm command, npm init, keystone app, and then your app name. But like I said, I'm going to use yarn for this video. So yarn create keystone app, uh, let's say book inventory and let's see what happens now we have to wait a bit and then we will have to answer a bunch of questions so the first one is the project name let's use the same name like um, book inventory and then let's use mongodb i leave this as a default mongodb slash localhost slash book inventory then let's test the database connection. Let's choose yes. It successfully connected to the database. And now we have to use a starter project. We can choose next. We can choose a basic to do app, a starter code with users and authentication. But because we want to learn everything from scratch, we will use a blank app. So like it says in the terminal, it's a completely blank project. It just provides an admin UI and a GraphQL application ready for you to configure. So let's choose this one. Now it's going to install the dependencies, which will take a while. So we have to wait until we wait. Let's go through the five questions we answered. First of all, it prompts you to enter the project name. You can choose whatever you want. Then it prompts you to select a database which can either be mongodb postgresql or prisma now it asks us in the third question where the database is located in the tutorial you see the local host which means that the database resides on my machine it's a local database and then it has the database connection and then you can choose a starter template as you can see the application is ready so let's cd into it and let's run yarn dev and see what happens this is the dashboard of our application you can see it's empty with no use at the moment because we don't have any lists before going further i want to talk about some keystone basics in keystone js we call the models list for example if we want to create users we have to create a user list as I said, you can think of these lists as models in MongoDB. It describes the structure of our objects. Lists are just a way of representing data. And these lists are made of fields. For example, let's say we want a user with a first name, last name, username and password fields. The user is the list or the model and the first name and others are the fields. So lists are made of fields. A field represents a piece of information about that list. To make it easier to understand, let's see an example. Let's open the application in the code editor. So here you can see the application. Let's close this so you can see it better. It's pretty simple and with not much in it. Here is the project name, here is the adapter config which contains the database URL and here is just a basic uh, configuration of Keystone and then we export everything. Okay, for a better structures and to avoid repeating code and to make our project easier to navigate, let's create a folder for all our lists or schemas. I'll call this folder schemas because it makes sense for me but you can call it lists or models or whatever so let's create the schemas folder and let's create the user list or the user model user js before creating any list we need to import the fields we are going to use in this case for user we will use text field and password for the moment so let's import that const text password 
and we can import those from keystone.js slash fields and then we have to export it as follows we define the fields which is an object let's enter the first name which is of type text is required so the user cannot proceed further until the user enters the first name let's copy the same thing for the last name let's use a username as well just to make it uh, easier to log in type text is required true and then password which is of type password and is required as well so this is how a list or a model or a schema looks like first of all we import the fields we want from keystonejs.fields and then we export the fields for our list be aware we only created the fields we create the list in the index.js file so does it make sense until now we specify the fields for our user.js this is the fields object and we specified first name last name and username to be of type text and to be required and password which is of type password and is required as well now let's go into the index.js file and let's import that const user schema and let's import that from schemas schemas user and now let's create the list we can do so by writing keystone create list and we specify the name of the list which is user and then we pass the user schema so we have a user model let's open the terminal inside vs code and let's run it yarn dev as you can see we have users we have the users model and now we can create users for example let's try to leave this one empty even though you can see it says required pick cp and let's set a password which is one create you can see it says please fill this field so let's do just that let's create it let's save it and you can see it was saved successfully we have a user so well done so how did we do it first of all we created the schema which you can see here which specifies what the user should contain and then we created the list here in this step after importing the schema here so we define the fields and then we create the list here we will create the book model for our inventory so let's go here and create book.js let's import only the text field for the moment so on the text required keystone.js slash fields and then i already have the schema defined so i don't type that much here you can copy it from the github repository which i linked in the description of this video let's copy everything so we have the following fields we have the name of the book we have the author we have the genre we have the description and we have the edition for example paperback hardback and stuff like that let's save it let's go back to index.js and let's import it the same way we imported the user schema so schemas book let's create a book list keystone create list book book schema it's important to know that this create list method comes with keystone itself it's not something that i created or that you have to create now let's restart the server and let's see if the changes took effect let's wait for the server and we have a problem text is not defined yep somewhere yep here is the problem text and now let's run it again okay let's refresh the page and you can see we have books as well let's just create one um what should we create object oriented programming javascript uh author i don't know youtube 
genre tech or let's write programming um, description a programming book about javascript op and let's just write here ebook save changes and we have the book here okay there is one problem we have books and users but we have no relationships between them so how do we know who read what so what will the relationship look like between these two a user or a person can read many books and the same book can be read by many people so we have a many-to-many -many relationship the first step is to go into the user schema and import the relationship field from keystone.js fields and then we have to define it the same way we did it with the other fields so what should we call like books and it's of type relationship and we need a reference field so let's do that book readers and then many true so let's take these fields again like we have a i don't know a type text for the last name this is how we have a type relationship for the books field the reference field indicates that this field relates to the readers field in the book schema and many this just specified that there is a many to many relationship that is a user can read many books now let's save it and let's go to the book schema let's import relationship here as well and again we have to add the readers field by the way you can name it however you want i just used readers and books because it makes the most sense for me type relationship reference is user what was the field user books and and then many true and now it should work the relationship should be created so let's rerun it and see if it works so let's see now if it works we should have the same thing so let's go to books and you can see we have a readers field let's select my user and save the changes and now if we go into the users we should see that we have the book here yep perfect however there is this ugly label for users this is the id of the user and we don't want to see that or we don't want to display that if you go in the users you can see the label is the this ugly id so let's change that the way we can change that ugly id and display something else like the username or first name or whatever is to use the label name field it's important to edit outside the fields object not inside so this is outside let me make this smaller so you can see this you can see that it's outside the fields and the name is label field and the username so we chose the username to be displayed instead of the id let's save it let's make it bigger again so you can see and then let's rerun it and tada no more ugly id we have a label now which is the username cp if we go into the books you can see that the reader is cp so it's that easy to create models or however you want to call them list and to create relationships between them actually let's play a bit with the graphql api so now let's see how can we retrieve all the users or all the books in graphql let's open the docs and let's try to use this all users method so first of all we have to specify that it's a query let's use all users and let's specify the fields we want back for example last name first name username and let's do this for the moment so you can see it returned everything we wanted now let's see how can we get the books associated with this user as well so let's go to the docs let's see books books which is another object and we can get the name of the book and let's see what happens here you can see 
this is the book read by this user by myself also we can have other fields as well like description what else author what was there let's see what do we have in the book field let's make this smaller genre and edition genre edition so we got all the users and their books the only reason we have only this user and books is because that's the only thing we added now let's try to get all the books so again query all books let's get the name and then let's see what other fields it has so all books we have readers in the similar vein username and let's do just that you can see this book is only read by cpit this is how you can play with graphql and with your data and it's super useful if you want to create a front-end application for this keystone application you have to use this graphql queries and you'll get the data the next step is authorization and authentication you don't want everyone to have access to the admin panel and most certainly you don't want everyone to have access to everything for example you don't want everyone to be able to delete other people's books therefore let's start implementing that and we will do that by implementing four helping functions these functions will help us to check if a user is logged in if it's an owner of a resource if it's an admin and so on let's start with the first one const is admin authentication item user so let's return exclamation mark exclamation mark user and then user is admin and then we have to do the same thing more or less for the is logged in for the logged in function so let's just copy paste it and and remove this part and now let's check if a user is the owner of a resource so const is owner let's copy the same thing and then let's create a function if it's not the user return false otherwise return the id of the user and now we create another function that checks whether the user is the owner or the admin so const is admin or owner and then we take the op object we create is admin again so access is admin auth this one is the function we created here above let's make this smaller so this one is this function and then const is owner access is owner auth and similarly this function it's this one so this one is this function and now let's return the access if it's admin we return the admin if not we return the owner now let's add all functions on the access object access is admin is logged in is owner is admin or owner and now we are ready to make changes to play with the permissions we have to replace these two lines the first thing we have to do is to replace this with the following object fields user schema fields and basically this thing is the long form for this one we explicitly pass the fields however we need to do it like that so we have access to the access object so here we specify the permissions for the crude operations read a user has to be logged in to be able to read other users to create users we only want the admin to have this permission is admin to update the same access is admin 
and to delete them the same. We only want the admin to make changes to users and maybe for the update we can give access to the owner as well. For example, someone might want to update their profile. We can copy the same thing for the for this one and then we can just change it to to the book book and we want everyone to be able to read it which we can do it this way by providing true and by the way we forgot the odd object here odd true and let's fix it uh, create we want everyone to be able to create books is logged in update books only the admin or the owner and delete only the admin so let's see how this works. Of course, you can play around and change the permissions as you want, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I just did it like this. So let's run the application. We don't have we don't have access because we are not logged in yet. We have to create an odd strategy, which is what we will do just now. To be able to allow and restrict access, you have to install the odd password package which you can do as follows. Let's do yarn add keystone.js auth password. Similarly, you can use the npm command. So let's add that. And I have a mistake here, which is yarn, not yarn. Let's import it here. Const password auth strategy require keystone auth password and now we are ready to use it let's create a new object which looks as follows const auth strategy keystone create auth strategy type we imported it here password auth strategy where you are here and then list user so use the user list to log in users i hope it makes sense and then we specify what should the users use to log in for example the username and the password identity field username secret field password so users can log in using a username and a password Let's modify this one, the export. Let's add auth strategy and let's see how it works. So you see now we have a login form. Let's log in. If I remember the password is one. Yep, we can see the users now. Again, we can see the books because the users have to be logged in to be able to access this information. And you can see we have this ugly label field again. So let's change that first of all, which we can do as follows. Let's copy this one, the label field. So let's add it on the user list. Bam, bam. So far, so good. The only thing we have to do is to add this simple check. Is access allowed? Is logged in? So let's see what happens now. Open the admin UI. We log in again with the same password. And you can see it works. There is no problem. But look at this. We want to restrict the access to the admin UI only to admins. So let's do that. Is admin. And now if we start the application again, you'll see we don't have access unless this uh, user is an admin. You can see we don't have access anymore. You cannot log in because the user is not an admin. So this is how you protect your resources and the admin UI. Now let's allow the users to make themselves admins so we can access the admin UI. First of all, let's change this back to is logged in so we can access the dashboard. And let's go to the user list and let's add here another field called is admin which is of type checkbox which we have to import right here at the top of the file and let's use the default value of false be aware that everyone can make themselves 
and admin or revoke this access for themselves you have to make sure only admins can make other people admins so let's refresh everything and let's see if it works let's go back to the sign in let's put the password and let's make ourselves an admin no thanks no thanks users cp is admin save changes now if we change back the access we should have access to the admin ui so let's do that is admin and we should have access to the admin dashboard but now everyone can make themselves an admin so one two three four five six seven eight and we have access if we go back you can see that i can remove it however we don't want everyone to be able to make themselves an admin but we can solve that with the access object or property or field or whatever you want to call it like we have the access object here we can add the same thing in the fields for example access and we can copy this line of code from here the same thing from the index.js file and let's return user is admin this makes sure that nobody can make themselves an admin save it and let's go to the index.js file and change this to is logged in to make sure it works same password now we go to the users no thanks no thanks and look at this if you want to make yourself an admin you'll have a surprise look access denied error you don't have access to this resource so that's a great way of restricting users from making themselves admin but if we want to change anything else let me just reset changes and let's just change my name to Kata and save changes and it works saved successfully so this is how you can restrict access to various fields we just do it like this and obviously you can do it like we did it here you can provide read write update delete but i wanted the same thing for all CRUD operations so what do you think about keystone js do you like it in my case i love it so far it's so easy to create an application from scratch i enjoy it a lot i'm curious to see what you think and please feel free to let me know in the comments thank you for watching